Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, we take your calls and hear your stories. The phone number to share yours is 855-853-4802, or you can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802, or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown, and quite possibly, the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. We'd love to hear your real ghost stories. It's Tony and Todd with you on today's episode of the program. Have you ever been frightened by animals out in nature? Anything ever scare you out in the woods? Like well, kinda, you know, sometimes you know, when you hear that stuff, you know, creeping and crawling around, mm-hmm. uh, it kind of freaks you out a little bit. Um, I can't think of anything that's really scared me. I don't, I'm not a big fan of like snakes and stuff. So yeah. like, I lived out in the country and if I would see snakes, that would kind of freak me out, but oh. nothing really out in the woods. I had one of those the other day too. I, we, we were just talking off the air about uh, me catching our cat and I'll share that uh, update <laughs> here, but I, I killed a copperhead yesterday. Uh, as Shut well. up. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden I get, I'm, I'm in the studio down here and I have no windows and I have, it's fairly soundproof in this portion of the house. And all of a sudden I get a call from my fiance and I'm, it's just, I answer like, Hey, I hear snake, snake, there's a snake. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So I, uh, I go upstairs and I, I'm like, Hey, where are y'all at? And I figure it out. And there's this copperhead kind of out by the driveway and um, copperheads are not nice snakes. They're, you know, they can, they can hurt you. And we have many dogs that like to go outside and I don't want them to get bit. So yes, I killed the copperhead. Send me your hate mail now. Um, but uh, that, uh, that was that. But something good did happen uh, regarding uh, nature over the last couple of days. Our yeah. cat, Bubbles, who I've mentioned on this show here many a times in the last 10 years, um, it got out. And I don't know how. We still haven't figured that part out. doesn't really matter. But it got out uh, and then had an Apple AirTag on it to kind of, you know, I had it there to track its path, uh, if you will, in case anything ever happened. Normally, it was just to find it around the house. But that thing let me know where it was by pinging on and off for two weeks as the cat searched all around the neighborhood, went over to the baseball field in the high school, lived in culverts uh, for about two weeks, got a lot of mice, and I ended up putting uh, bobcat traps out around the area. (laughs) (laughs) So this looks, you know, this is me. You know, I, I think about the things that, like, my parents did to embarrass me inadvertently. Here I am walking around, like, the grounds by the high school with large bobcat traps. (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm also thinking like when people think about you as a podcaster, yeah. like the last thing you think is some guy walking around with bobcat traps oh, during there, the day. There was one day where I pulled up in the Real Ghost Stories online vehicle and pulled bobcat <laughs> traps out of the back and then walked into the woods. Oh. <laughs> people are like, what the hell is that guy doing? I think I'm like, I'm going to go catch a ghost and then them hear bobcat traps or something. But eventually, after moving the traps around about seven times, uh, at the end of the day, we caught about 13 raccoons uh, and four possums, all of which were set free. Uh, and they enjoyed a delicious either cat food or uh, some tuna that I was putting in there. So they can't complain. They had a nice little meal. Uh, yep. And eventually, last uh, a week ago on Thursday night, I get a call about 10 o'clock from the gentleman whose property I put some of those on saying, I think we found your cat in one of the things. And Harper was thrilled. She was crying. She never thought she'd see her cat again. I frankly didn't think we would either. <laughs> and uh, it's back. And it looks at me with disdain every time I see it. Like, <laughs> like, you asshole. You you took me out of my freedom and my nature. The thing is, this cat hated the outdoors. This thing never wanted to go outside. If I had the doors open at her old house, it wouldn't even... It, it's like, it would just stick to the wall. Did not want to go out. And then one day, wow. just decided... I'm going to go live a life out here <laughs> and did. And I even saw it a few times in that search and it would just turn around and run the other way every time. <laughs> That's even better. I know. And the cat gave me the paw too. Like I saw, <laughs> I caught it smoking. I mean, it, it, when I got it back, it it did. It had a four tattoos. Uh, there's kind of a weird spider web tattoo on its uh, arm. I don't know what that's about. Um, piercings, piercings, some piercings. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
it's I don't know. It's it's a little questionable. It's wearing an eye patch now as well, and it has both <laughs> eyes. But I don't know. It likes to be referred to as Ruford. I don't know why. But, yeah. Um, but the cat's back, <laughs> and and we're all good. So, but I do think I had I, I one of the animals that one of the possums that I got. Um, it was kind of scary uh, because all the other ones that I got and they wanted to get out of the cage. I tipped it over, let them out. They ran. This one didn't want to leave. It was one of the last ones too. just kind of looked at me when I tipped it over. It's like, you can go. And he's like, yeah. and he gives me this like hiss. So I had to kind of like tap him and he, then he eventually ran away. But I was a little bit concerned that maybe that one had rabies. Really? That's kind of scary. Possums are weird animals anyway, you know, because well, they, they're just odd. They are odd, but they're all ready to get out and they're not ready for me to, they don't want to hang out usually after you show them that there's a way to escape this cage. Um, I don't know. This one's just kind of acting weird on me, but um, there you go. I got, it was, good, it was sweet on you. Good close encounters with nature. Over the last, <laughs> uh, week. Um, so now I have four bobcat traps in case I ever want to catch bobcats again. Put those, put those <laughs> online for sale. <laughs> That'd be great. I'm going to keep them in the, uh, in the repository of end of the world stuff. So should we ever need to catch raccoons for dinner? I've gotten pretty good at that. So dang, you're, you're set. There you go. I'm all good. Let's go to uh, a caller of a ghost story. Hi. Hi. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I'm sitting outside because I'm terrified of telling the story inside. Um, so I wanted to share a story that I had with a ghost or lower energy thing um this is actually probably about a year ago but the story is like probably the craziest thing that i've ever experienced so i want to first start off by saying that i practice african spirituality which where um you do ancestor veneration which means you invite the spirits of your benevolent ancestors into your home and you ask them to guide you and protect you and i was practicing this for a while and then I started to develop spiritual gifts and things like that um, I preface that I preface the story with that because I think this has a lot to do with why I had the experience that I did so I was away at undergrad in um, New York and my family is originally from Louisiana and when I came back for Christmas in 2018 I was in my house that I grew up in didn't really have a problem with anything growing up, you know, never really had the creeps. But like I said, um, this is something that came about when I started practicing my new religion, my new form of spirituality. So when I came back for Christmas, I had a terrible feeling every single day that I was in the house, even the first night to a point where I would stay up all night and I wouldn't go to sleep until 7 a.m. when the sun rose every single night and I had all the lights on at all times. I was even scared during the day when my mother was gone at work and I just felt a very, very hostile energy. I felt something just didn't want me there. I felt really uncomfortable. I was terrified and I just felt just something so angry at me for being there. So one day I was walking around the house and I was particularly scared. Middle of the day, noon, sunshine, bright, you know, Louisiana weather, even in December. (laughs) Um, And I just felt really scared, more scared than usual. I felt like something was following me around the house. I felt like something was just really angry. It It was getting worse. So I called my friend, my best friend at the time, and I was like, I'm so scared, like, what are you doing? I wanna leave, I wanna leave the house. And then as I was talking to her, all of a sudden the phone cuts out completely and it's like very, very staticky. And I hear a voice screaming. And meanwhile, we were talking normally. This has never happened and has never happened since. So I hear a voice screaming through the phone, like a staticky voice screaming, go home, go home. (laughs) And immediately I hung up the phone. (laughs) I was terrified. 
because it just kept screaming the same thing, go home, go home. And like I said, I've never experienced something like, like that before. Then I hung up the phone and I called my friend back and I asked her, did you do that? Did you say that? Like, what, are you alone? Like, she's like, no, I'm alone in the house. I don't, what are you talking about? And then I'm like, I just, I can't even tell you what I just heard. And then I told her and she is not even a person who believes in ghosts. She's not even a person who's that religious, but immediately she started praying because she knew I wasn't lying. Even that night, I slept with my mom in bed because I was so scared, and I am 23 years old. And I felt the presence, and I saw I saw a dark figure in the corner of the room staring at me as I was going to sleep, even when I was with my mom, with the cats, you know, in the bed. Um, thought I was safe, but no, it was very, very, very angry that I was there. Um, and I couldn't sleep, I couldn't sleep with my mom, couldn't sleep by myself. She actually ended up selling the house, moving to a different part of Louisiana, so I don't have to deal with this anymore. But I do believe that with me practicing my new spirituality and things like that, and getting more in tune with my spiritual gifts, I was able to be targeted, or I was targeted. Interesting. What do you think of that? Was she targeted? I don't know if she was targeted. I mean, I can understand why she feels that way because some weird stuff really happened. I know a little bit about the type of spirituality she's talking about. And typically when you open yourself up to ancestors and things like that for them to guide your life, you also end up opening yourself up to other stuff. And um, I don't think she was targeted, but I think she, in opening up, she opened up to a lot more than she thought she was opening up to. So not targeting, but the door was opened essentially. The door was open. And, you know, when people talk about energies and and all that kind of stuff and people who are mediums and psychics, a lot of times they'll talk about the fact that the dead energies know that they're around. It's somehow they sense that and they are they drop that kind of energy in those people and, and all that kind of stuff. So maybe because she was opening herself up, she was drawing this this entity, this energy in somehow. That's interesting, uh, and and I can I can see that. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number. If you want to share your real ghost stories with us right here at Real Ghost Stories Online. If you want an ad-free experience, check it out on Apple Podcasts. Get access to all of our content ad-free there when you become a premium subscriber. Do check that out. Until next time, for Todd, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online. Thank you.